Hello, this is Mr. Field, and this is my video on the atmosphere. Now, before you watch this video, make sure you've got a good grasp on the basics of chemistry, um, states of matter, and how to separate mixtures. And I've got videos on all of those things earlier in this playlist, uh, if you need. Now, in this video, we're going to look at the composition of the modern atmosphere. Then we'll look at the ancient atmosphere and the evidence for how we know what it used to be like. Um, before we look at how the atmosphere is changing and also the tests for the various different gases that you need to know. Okay, so the modern atmosphere. Air is a mixture of a range of different gases, and we can see those summarized in the pie chart here. So the main gases are nitrogen, which is 78%, oxygen, which is 21%, argon, around 0.9%, carbon dioxide, 0.04% and finally a range of other gases um, at less than uh, or somewhere around 0.1% so those gases include things like methane, helium, neon, hydrogen, krypton and xenon but the main ones for you to remember are nitrogen at 78%, oxygen at 21% and carbon dioxide at a very small fraction below that of about 0.04%. Now, you might have noticed that there's no mention of water vapour anywhere. Um, that's because this is the dry composition of the atmosphere, by which we mean the composition ignoring water vapour. And the reason for that is simply that the concentration of water vapour in the air varies a lot, between about 0 and 4%, depending on things like um, location, climate, season, and so on. So let's have a look at the ancient atmosphere. Now, the ancient Earth... Um, we're talking somewhere around 4 billion years ago, was very hot, you know, perhaps over 200 degrees Celsius. Um, it was very volcanic, far, far, far more volcanoes uh, than there are now. Um, and it was lifeless. Life had not had a chance to evolve uh, that early in our history. Now, we don't know for sure what the uh, composition of the atmosphere was at that time, but we believe there was little or no um, oxygen. There was a lot of carbon dioxide, a lot of water vapour, and small amounts of other gases such as methane and ammonia. Now, it's just worth noting that this model here, particularly the large amount of carbon dioxide, doesn't seem to match our current scientific understanding. Um, so this is actually slightly outdated, but this is what Edexcel requires you to know. Um, I have been uh, on the email having a bit of an argument with them, and uh, they will not budge. So you need to know this even though that's not necessarily the actual truth okay so let's look at some of the evidence for the composition of the ancient atmosphere we'll start off by looking at how do we know about the lack of oxygen in the atmosphere so what we find in various ancient rocks is that they contain minerals um, that cannot survive exposure to oxygen which tells us that they were formed at a time when the atmosphere contained no oxygen and one example of such a mineral is weathered iron pyrite grains. Now, pyrite is a mineral that naturally, as soon as there's any oxygen around, it will convert itself to iron oxide. And it naturally forms these cube-shaped crystals like this. Now, what we find in these very ancient rocks is there are weathered grains of pyrite where the grains are no longer cubic uh, like they would naturally form, but are actually um, rounded. So how do we form rounded um, grains of pyrite from something that starts out as a cube? Well, what happens is the weather blows the sort of pyrite grains around, and as they bump, bump against other things, their edges get knocked off, and they get turned into these rounded shapes. Now, the fact that they remained as pyrite means that the air that was blowing them around and weathering them must have had no oxygen in it. So these minerals, like weathered iron pyrite, they can tell us that there must have been no oxygen present in the atmosphere when they formed, because if there was, they would have got oxidised to iron oxide. Now, what about the high carbon dioxide content? How do we know about that? Well, the early Earth was highly volcanic, and we know that modern volcanoes today emit huge amounts of carbon dioxide. So it kind of stands to reason that the volcanoes then would also have been emitting large amounts of carbon dioxide. Also, if we look around our 
solar system at other rocky planets like Venus and Mars that are very similar in structure to Earth, they also have these atmospheres that are rich in carbon dioxide. So again, it's reasonable to think that our early atmosphere would have been rich in carbon dioxide as well. So how did the atmosphere change from that really inhospitable ancient atmosphere to the benign one that we have now? Well, the first big change was there was a decrease in water vapour. And to understand that, we have to remind ourselves that in the very early Earth, the atmosphere was super hot. We're talking 200 degrees Celsius plus. Now, that is far too hot for liquid water to exist. But over time, the Earth cooled down and all of that water vapour condensed. And as it did so, it rained to form the oceans. And you can sort of see what that might look like just there. So all of the oceans were once water vapour in the air, but as the Earth cooled, that water vapour condensed. It rained for thousands of years and the oceans were formed. Next then was the increase in oxygen. Now, the big event that caused the increase in oxygen was the evolution of life that could photosynthesize. What photosynthesis does is it consumes carbon dioxide and releases oxygen. So this had a dual effect. Not only was it increasing the oxygen concentration, but it was also decreasing the carbon dioxide concentration. And the decrease in carbon dioxide was also caused by a couple of other things. One is that once you've got oceans, the carbon dioxide can dissolve in those oceans, um, which you know, is an effect you've seen yourself every time you've had a fizzy drink. Those bubbles of carbon dioxide that are dissolved in the drink. The other effect is that marine organisms, you know, we're talking things like shellfish and crabs and all sorts of those creatures, um, they form their skeletons using a mineral called calcium carbonate. Now, calcium carbonate is formed from carbon dioxide. Now, when those creatures with their calcium carbonate skeletons die, they sink to the bottom of the ocean. And over time, their skeletons build up in great thick layers to form calcium carbonate rocks, like you can see on the White Cliffs of Dover there. And so that permanently locks the carbon dioxide away and keeps it out of the atmosphere, further decreasing the carbon dioxide concentration. OK, so the last thing on this uh, presentation is to look at the test for different gases. The first one is carbon dioxide, um, CO2. Now, the test for carbon dioxide is this. We bubble a gas through lime water, which is a solution of calcium hydroxide, CaOH2. Now, if the gas that we're bubbling through the lime water is carbon dioxide or contains carbon dioxide, the lime water will turn a milky colour like this. And that's because we're getting a precipitate of calcium carbonate formed as the carbon dioxide reacts with that calcium hydroxide. The next test we've got is for hydrogen. And for this one, we get a wooden splint and we light it. And then we stick it into a test tube of gas. And if that gas is hydrogen, it produces a squeaky pop sound like this. Boop! which is actually a very small explosion as the hydrogen rapidly burns to form water. Our last test is for oxygen. Now, for this one, we get a glowing splint. So what we mean by that is we take a splint, we set it on fire, and then we blow it out so it's got a red-hot glowing end. And we'll stick that into the um, test tube. And if the, flint, if the splint relights, that means that the gas was oxygen. Okay, so that's it, the end. As always, thank you for listening and well done if you got this far.